ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار dear beloved brothers and sisters in islam allah azza wa jal in surah as-saffat from verses 39 and onwards he says ba'da a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim wa ma tujzawna illa ma kuntum ta'malun and you will not be rewarded except for that which you used to do of your deeds illa ibadallahi al-mukhlasin except the chosen sincere servants of Allah fi jannatin sorry ulaika lahum rizqum ma'lum fawakihu wa hum mukramun fi jannatin na'im ala sururin mutaqabilin yutafu alayhim bi ka'sin min ma'in bayda'a ladhatin lisharibin la fiha ghawlun wa la hum 'anha yunzafun wa 'indahum qasirat at-tarfi'in ka'an ka'annahunna baydun maknun Allah azza wa jalla says in the remaining verses that they will have a provision that is only known to Allah i.e. their reward is so great that only Allah knows its description they will have fruits of jannah they will be honored they will be in gardens of eternal pleasure they will be sitting on thrones facing one another they will be served constantly a cup of wine from a flowing spring that does not end a drink that is white and delicious to those who drink it and it will have no bad effect upon them nor from it will they be intoxicated and with them will be spouses limiting their glances with large beautiful eyes as if they were delicate eggs well protected in this place in the Quran as in many other places Allah azza wa jalla gives a very elaborate a very descript account of what jannah awaits for those who do good those who are sincere in their duty to Allah azza wa jalla and Allah azza wa jalla only mentions the things here of reward in jannah that can be understood by the human mind that can be rationalized but allah azza wa jalla started this section by saying the reward is known with him allah and whenever allah azza wa jalla speaks about jannah in this way whether in ayat or mentioned in hadith the scholars tell us that allah azza wa jalla explains it in such a way because what he has to offer cannot be understood by the human mind in this dunya that even if you were to see it you would not understand it even if we were to hear its wording and description it would not make sense but brothers and sisters the point of mentioning verses like this right after talking about a'mal talking about deeds is so that we become encouraged we become motivated to act upon what is prescribed for us in our deen and we know that our deen is built upon pillars and that these pillars they cannot be neglected in a hadith narrated by Abu Hurairah radhiyallahu ta'ala an in Shu'ab al-Iman by Imam al-Bayhaqi the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is reported to have said Islam is to worship Allah without associating partners with him to establish the salah to give the sadaqa the zakah to fast the month of Ramadan and to perform the hajj to the house to the bait of Allah to enjoin good and forbid evil and to greet people with peace then he sallallahu alaihi wasallam went on to say whoever neglects anything from these things has abandoned 
a part of Islam. And whoever neglects all of them has thrown Islam behind their back. Meaning to say, brothers and sisters, that these deeds that Allah has enjoined upon us, they are something that we cannot neglect. They are, some, they are something that we cannot choo pick and choose when we'll do it, how we'll do it. It must be fulfilled if we hope for the promise of Islam, which is Jannah. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever comes with five deeds, and this is narrated by Abu Darda and Sunan Abi Dawood, whoever comes with five deeds along with their Iman will enter Jannah. That Jannah that was just mentioned in the verses, you will enter paradise if you have Iman and you do five things. What are they? You preserve the five daily prayers. You preserve your wudu. You preserve your, your ruku' and your sujood and the timings of each of the salah. And whoever fasts the month of Ramadan, look at this. And whoever performs the hajj to the house, if they can find the means, and who can give charity with a cheerful soul. A cheerful soul. And whoever fulfills the trust. These five things, that if you do them and you have iman while doing them, and you do it with a cheerful soul, then Allah will definitely grant you that paradise that has been described in his book. It's worth mentioning that in the tafsir of these verses of Surah As-Saffat, Allah Azawajal, the, the scholars tell us that there were two men from Bani Israel whose situation was described in detail. And this is mentioned, if you listen to it, if you really take into account what's being said here, it will drive home the point that we should engage in as many of these righteous deeds and do extra in doing these, these deeds so that we can attain the reward that's mentioned in this story. So there were two men who were business partners from Bani Israel. And they had collected about 8,000 dinars. One of them was very skillful in trade. And the other one was not. The one who was skillful said to the one that was not, you don't have skills like mine. So I think I will divide the money with you and leave you to spend it however you wish. Meaning after this point, I'm not going to mix my money with yours. I'm going to do a separate investment and you do yours. The skillful man went on to buy a house that previously used to belong to a king and who had died. And he did so for the price of 1,000 dinars. He called his former business partner up and showed him his house. And he said to him, what do you think of this house? I bought it for 1,000 dinars. The partner was amazed. And he said, this is a very beautiful house. When he went out, the partner that didn't buy the house, when he went out and he left, he said, oh Allah, this companion of mine has bought this house for 1,000 dinars. I ask you, O oh Allah, that you grant me one of the houses of Jannah. And then he gave 1,000 dinars away in sadaqah. Then as much time passed as Allah will should pass. Later, the skillful business partner went on to become married. And he married a woman with a dowry, a mahar of 1,000 dinars. So afterwards, he invited his friend again, his companion, and made food for him. When he came, he said, I have married this woman with a mahar of 1,000 dinars. And the friend said, MashaAllah, a beautiful wife that you have. When he left the home, he said, Ya Rabb, my companion has married a woman with a mahar of 1,000 dinars. I ask you for a wife from among al hurul Ain. And he gave 1,000 dinars away in sadaqah. Then as much time passed as Allah will should pass. Then again, that first man, he purchased two gardens for 2,000 dinars. So now at this point, he spent that 
4,000 dinars from the business that they had done years ago. Then he called his companion and showed him these two gardens. And he said, I have bought these two for 2,000 dinars. The man again replied, the friend again replied, how beautiful this is. He was impressed. When he came out from those gardens, he said, Ya Rabb, my companion has bought two gardens for 2,000 dinars. I ask you for two gardens in Jannah. And he gave those 2,000 dinars that he had remaining away in Sadaqah. And not too long after that, the angel of death came to the both of them and took their souls in death. He took the one who had given his money in Sadaqah and put him in a house that he liked. There was a woman there who was so beautiful that the ground beneath her would shine. Then the angel took him to two gardens and gave him other things which are only known to Allah as was mentioned in the verse. Things that cannot be described to the eyes and to the ears and to the mind. This man said, this is similar to the things that my business partner had had and that I asked Allah to give to me in Jannah. The angel said to this man, that is exactly what this is. This house, these gardens, and this wife are all for you. The man said, that partner of mine, he used to say to me, are you someone who believes in akhirah? Are you someone who believes in the reward of good deeds? You think what you do is going to be? No. This life is the only life. He would say things like that to me. It was said to him by that angel that that friend of yours is in Jahannam. That friend of yours is in Jahannam. Look down. So the man will look down and he would see his companion in the midst of Jahannam. And he would say to him, Wallahi, you nearly ruined me. You were enticing me with the dunya. You were showing me that spend your money like me. You were enticing me with the dunya into not striving for and spending in the cause of Allah and instead spending on selfish material wants. Had it not been for the grace of my Lord that he provided guidance and reminders to not chase after the dunya with no concern for what I could instead attain of the akhirah, I would have certainly been among those present in Jahannam along with you. May Allah Azza wa Jal grant us goodness and understanding. Akhul qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiru innahu al ghafurur rahim. A'udhu billahi al-sameel alimi min ash-shaytan al-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ثم أما بعد. Brothers and sisters, in the hadith that I mentioned before, if you were paying attention, you would notice that along with Ramadan, of course it's in our five pillars, but in those hadith specifically, along with Ramadan, Allah Azza wa Jal mentions establishing the salah in both hadith, a hadith, and giving sadaqah. Spending in the way of Allah. And that the reward for doing, for fulfilling these obligations is rizqum ma'lum min Allah. A reward from Allah that is only known to Him. Meaning the only way that you're going to gain the reward of Jannah that is beyond description is by fulfilling these obligations. Many times in the Quran, Allah Azawajal, when He talks about Jannah, He refers to it as nuzula. And then he goes on to describe, give descriptions like what we saw in the verses. But in the Arabic language, the word nuzul is in, old, in the old use of the language. It's used to refer to the, the front of the house or an appetizer. So what the scholars, some of the scholars, they take from this is that what Allah has described of Jannah in the Quran that we can understand of description is only the beginning. That there is so much more in Jannah that cannot be described. And that the way that you attain that is through righteous deeds and being, being devout in doing them like the man in the story. 
He was devout in that. He didn't become sidetracked by the glitz and glamour of what his friend had accumulated. He didn't have that house. He didn't have that spouse. And he didn't have those gardens. He gave all of that up. He sacrificed it. Even though he could have used his money in the same exact way. And instead he spent that money in the cause of Allah. And because of that Allah gave him something that others could not attain. And we have opportunities in this month, every single day, every single week. During the month of Ramadan, all of the masajid, all of the Islamic centers, they ramp up their efforts to raise funds for the various Islamic programs and schools and relief expeditions. Allah Azawajal is affording us these opportunities. These aren't annoying opportunities that come along because people want your money. This is Allah Azawajal sending you an opportunity to do good. You reached Ramadan because Allah wants good for you and I. You reached Ramadan because Allah Azawajal wants you and I to come closer to Him. So when these, these appeals happen, this is Allah asking you, will you not spend in my way? Will you not give me tardan hasana? Let me ask you something. These causes, today we have a cause here raising money for an Islamic school, al huda school in College Park, Maryland. Let me ask you something. Let me speak to the parents. Do you really want to send your children to a school where the children will be asked, what gender are you? Do you really want to send your children to a school that will teach them there's a separation between religion and the rest of life? Do you really want to send your children to a school that will teach them to question everything that came from a sadiq al-ameen? Do you really want that? If you don't want that, then you have to spend in these causes because we need to build not just this one Islamic school, but as many as possible. It saddens me when I think about that in the DMV, there is still not an Islamic university. We are in the nation's capital. There are Islamic universities out in Dallas and California and Buffalo and so many other places. Why is there not one here? If we want it here, we have to spend on it, brothers and sisters. And by the way, this concern, it may seem like it's just dunya related because we need a school here and we need an opportunity for our children, for our families to hold on to their Islam here in the non-Muslim world. But this will have far-reaching impacts. On the day of judgment, you will be able to say to Allah that, Ya Allah, I supported your cause. Maybe I wasn't a scholar. Maybe I wasn't an abid who was devout in worship, who could spend entire nights in tahajjud and spend entire days fasting. But I could take the rizq, the money that you gave me, and spend it in your cause to uplift the da'wah to Islam and to ensure and fulfill the obligation, and as I've said in khutbah before, upon myself to guide my, my, my house, my spouse, my children to Islam, to establish the salah and to establish the deen in my home. Ya Allah, I did that and I did my best. So brothers and sisters, please think about that today as you leave. That what else are we spending our resources and time and efforts in? Why are we spending so much time chasing vain things? Things that only bring temporary pleasure. And then after that temporary pleasure is attained, we just run to the next one and to the next one and to the next one. And there's no good in our record of deeds that come from it. May Allah Azawajal grant us understanding. Oh Allah, make us from among the musaddiqeen. O oh Allah, make us from the muhsineen. O oh Allah, azawajal, make us from among those who chase after your reward and your promise. O oh Allah, azawajal, make us from among those who put Islam in front of us and do not put it behind us. O oh Allah, azawajal, help us to establish 
the da'wah to Islam, your deen here in this land and in all other lands, as your prophets and messengers and companions did beforehand. Rabbana atina fid dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab anna rabbana la tuzil qulubana ba'da adhadaytana wa hablana min ladunka rahma inna kanta al-wahab Allahumma habib ilayna al-iman wa zayinhu fi qulubina wa karrih ilayna al-kufra wa al-fusuq wa al-isyan wa ja'alna min al-rashirin Allahumma ameen Ibad Allah إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة